are listening to KSQD Santa Cruz, KSQD 90.7 FM, streaming live at KSQD.org. I am Catherine Bell, and welcome to the Dream Journal, a weekly show where we explore the healing powers of your nighttime dreams through conversations with dream experts and with you. Words of Carl Jung, who looks outside dreams, who looks inside, awakens. Today's music is called Extra Nominal. Death and the spaces between. Dreaming can help us prepare for and recover from loss. But how do we continue to engage with spirit during our waking lives? Today we have a conversation about lucid living with Salah Dubell. I am your host, Catherine Bell of Experiential Dream Work, and welcome to The Dream Journal. The Dream Journal is also a podcast, so you can look for that in all podcast platforms and also on the KSQD website at ksqd.org slash the-dream-journal. So look for the Dream Journal wherever you see, wherever you play it, and review it, subscribe, but most importantly, tell your friends. That's really how people find out about the show, and it gives you an opportunity to talk about your dreams. Maybe they don't even know you're interested in your dreams. You can say, "Hey, this podcast I've been listening to." Hmm. So, my personal dream work. Uh, I had one of those dreams that I hear all the time. Uh, from other folks and I had not had one of these for myself yet Um, I am in a a dance class and I'm really loving it and it's super fun and the teacher comes over and gets real flirty with me and he's very attractive and I'm like ooh, I'm all flirtatious I feel giggly and schoolgirlish and then I'm like oh I'm married wait I can't be here (laughs) I can't be with you I'm married and I turn away and, um, and then I start, you know, worrying about my relationship and just, you know, there's things that happen and, and I have this worry sometimes. And so the question for me is, can I bring that worry to the dance teacher, that kind of flirtatious, girly energy? Can I bring that to the teacher? Can I bring that to my husband? Uh, so that's what I'm mulling over. We'll be accepting call-ins during the last half hour of the show, or you can email us at any time at onair at ksqd.org. So I want to say hello to Salah Dubell. Thanks for coming on the show. Hi, Catherine. Thanks for having me. Can you hear me? Yes, can hear you just fine. Thank you so much. So Salah is a co-founder of Divine by Design, a corporation dedicated to supporting community resilience and holistic wellness. As a generational dreamer, dream integration was essential to her family's paradigm for emotional wellness. Her spiritual journey includes immersive meditation practices, strategies for detoxification, and a profound understanding of the healing qualities of movement, song, prayer, and nature. She's facilitated dreaming workshops, providing techniques to navigate dreams and embrace lucid living. She's a member of the International Association for the Study of Dreams, is enrolled in IASD's Dreams and Ethnicity Study Group, and will join the Institute of Dream Studies this fall. And the website Salah Dubell uh, co-hosts with her brother Andrew Salasson is called divinebydesign.com. So Salah Dubell, so glad to have you on the show again. You've been on a couple of times now. Yeah, I uh, I was on once in April, and uh, then my brother came after. Ah, uh, okay, yes, it's uh, been great. And then, of course, I met you in person at the recent IASD conference in Tucson. That was such a treat to meet you in person. Yes, that was beautiful. That was an absolutely beautiful experience, and a uh, dreaming ball, and <laughs> getting yes. to to put a physical. Uh, the physical space to your to your emotional energetic was great. I loved mashing that up and seeing you in person as well. Absolutely, it was uh, it was so fun. I mean, it's been three years since we had an in person conference, and just to see everybody there, mm-hmm. we had a little bit of a hybrid component and. Um, and so Salah, uh, you grew up in Baltimore and 
uh, with a family that did talk about dreams. And I know dreaming is important to you from your family. And, and folks can listen to the April show to get a lot more detail about your background. And But of course, that was with uh, Andrusa. And so now you're here with Salah, Salah and Catherine having a conversation. Um, well, how did you well, what do you want to say about dreams, you and dreams and how you got interested in dreams and how your past has influenced your work with dreams. It just seems like there's so much there to talk about. Yeah, thank you so much, Catherine. Um, I, I guess similar to every, most humans on the planet, right? Um, you know, dreaming has, has been, you know, always been a part of, of my life. But what was different and why I say I come from a generational family of dreamers is because uh, the experiences of what we dreamed and, and how we then uh, spoke about and navigated and dealt with what we dreamed in our waking time was just a part of how my family moved. Um, I, uh, through, through the dreams that I've been uh, having from a really young age, my dreams really took off um, after I actually started my menses. I don't want to get <laughs> too technical for some of our callers, sure. but really taking that, um, that step into womanhood was, uh, was, a, was really blew the lid off the, the gasket, as it were. Uh, um, and, yeah, yeah. and I was at a very young age when that happened. And so moving through my dreaming experiences um, and just uh, embracing and being able to have that familial community absolutely woke up my, my dream life. And so uh, a lot of, it's really more like the journey into dream work um, mm. because dreaming has always been a part of my family paradigm. What's changed and what's shifted, and it came around the time of the pandemic, is uh, the openness with speaking about dreaming experiences outside of family members. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. What's that been like for yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. The, for all of the negativity and the struggles that the pandemic brought to us, it also brought a lot of common space. Our boogeyman had the same name <laughs> just you're, across the you're, board. Your what? Your whole, your, our, our boogeyman, boogeyman had the same name. <laughs> COVID, right? Oh, that <laughs> like one, it was the boogeyman. same, it was the like, same experience <laughs> that we were, that, um, that people were having. And so because we couldn't come together physically, right. what I encountered over and over again were, were people being more ready to be transparent about some of those vulnerable spaces and yes. some of the things that they were struggling with spiritually and emotionally. And dreaming was a huge factor that shifted for a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, during the pandemic. And sometimes it didn't shift so much as the willingness to speak about it shifted. Mm. And that's really where um, the call to... to Really, uh, that's when we founded Divine by Design. That was really kind of the um, the spark that that ignited things. So we took it from a practice that that we had, you know, we grew up with and and we shared amongst our family and friends and and maybe you know the one off times when people would hear from someone who heard from someone that that we're exceptional dreamers uh -huh. and then we you know would find ourselves um, you know consulting and, and giving uh, pointers about our experiences and our practices. I tell you, word of mouth is the best thing. I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it really exploded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. During the, um, the pandemic. So that's really, in a nutshell, the, the journey that we're on. So I understand that you're now um, a part of the, uh, um, the Dreams and Ethnicity program with IASD. Uh, yes. And I'm uh, I'm kind of excited about that. And we're going to have well, another, con another conference next uh, June. I'd love to Mm -hmm. Have you consider presenting? That would be awesome. But I also want to, you know, let's let's talk. Let's. I, I'm excited to talk about some of that. But I, I also want to get right to our main topic. Like, what yeah. about um, the spaces, uh, death, and the spaces between? Like, say <laughs> a little more about yeah. that. What is that for you? And what's been your experience? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to interweave this with uh, my uh, my the work that I'm taking, the journey I'm taking within dream work and with dreaming practices. And then what's um, what I'm integrating with and working with personally. So just on a personal note, just to put it out there, my mother recently transitioned. Mm. She uh, passed away on July 12th. Oh, wow. okay. And um, I wanted to share. Um, so backing up into this, lucid dreaming mm -hmm. and lucid living mm. are terms that I am hearing everywhere mm. <laughs> in the in the dreaming community. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I know that there is right now the lucid dreaming is a hot topic. It's sexy. Absolutely. People want to know <laughs> yes. if you wake up when you dream and, uh -huh. and uh, you know, do you stay asleep after you realize that you're dreaming and, and how do you 
how do you then integrate and what can you then heal like in, in the midst of a lucid dream? People are chasing lucid dreaming right now. It's a very hot topic. But I don't, um, as I'm studying and I'm speaking with more people in the field, I, I'm almost cautious against um, this association that's also happening where um, the, there's almost this assumption sometimes Times that lucid dreaming is a requirement for lucid living, and it's not. Oh, it, I, I, I mean, I don't, I haven't found it to be. <laughs> but you know, the two terms have you know lucidity tied into it. Lucid dreaming can absolutely bolster your experience of lucid living. But when I and my family have navigated through lucid living, what we talk about um, when we when we thinking of dream work is not just how your lucid dreams are allowing you to live a more lucid life. Mm-hmm. Lucid dreams are a part of that. Lucid living is more of intentionally choosing to pay attention to and engage with your dreaming spaces. And, uh, you know, if you think about it, um, nightmares, ancestral dreams, very vivid dreams, right? Mm-hmm. Those aren't technically lucid dreams, right? We, we don't always wake in the middle of nightmares and know that it's a nightmare. And no, but the be, effect... <laughs> yeah, it might be better but, if we could. <laughs> right. But, um, but the effect of a nightmare can stay with us for weeks, yeah. days, months after, mm-hmm. you know, that's ended. And so really, it's this idea that the healing that we can get from engaging with dream time, dream space, with the dreaming in our dreams isn't necessarily just measured uh, with how many lucid dreams we have, whether we're increasing or decreasing our lucidity, if, you know, and, and what that relationship looks like um, all the time, although it can be a very, very important element of it. Mm. It's more so this, and I call it the spaces between. It's the time between dreaming. It's maybe the time when you wake up, if you're having a series of dreams in, in one night, yeah. and some of the practices that you can when you're awake that will help you with integrating what you experience in your dreams so that you can live a more lucid and, and full life you know full life that that doesn't necessarily require that I increase my experiences of lucid dreaming tenfold right and I just want to ask you uh, that this is the dream journal and uh, this my guest is Salah Dubel and I am very interested in some of the practices that you recommend to bring uh, to bring the lucid dreaming experiences or any dreaming experiences what do you recommend to bring those experiences into life to, to start to engage more in this lucid living practice yeah thank you for that Catherine so um and I'm, and this is where I'm gonna, I'm gonna weave this into the journey that I've, I've been on with my mother's passing, mm. and this is where death kind of um, becomes a part of that. So, um, and I'm just gonna give the, the example of the journey that I'm currently on, um, and then stop me when we need to stop. Or you have of questions. course, no worries. That's my job. <laughs> but, uh, I'll do that. No, I. Yeah. You just, you... So, um, uh, way back in um, early March of this year, um, I started noticing a drift, a shift in, in my dream. I, uh, I typically have very good recall. I typically have very vivid dreams. I, you know, have a high number of lucid dreams. All that aside, I noticed that there was a theme that was repeating itself, and that theme was death. Mm. It was, um, you know, playing out in different scenarios. It was. It wasn't just um, one dream on repeat. It mm. was this pervasive, you know, at the end of whatever plot line is running itself out. The end of that is death. Oh, wow. <laughs> is what uh, uh-huh. is what was making itself known, and as I was journaling about that and noticing it, and this was in early March, mm-hmm. how I interpreted that when I would wake from the dreams was, okay, this is it, something's wrong with me, I'm sick, I'm <laughs> this so, is this is you know. So in some it, of those I, dreams, were yeah. you the one that was dying, or were the other people in the dreams? Yeah, it was. It was sometimes it was me. Sometimes it was me witnessing death. Sometimes uh. it was me. Uh, taking on the form of one of the the characters mm. or one of the the um, the people within my dream, and experiencing death through their perspective, mm-hmm. um, and but always at the end of it was was one thing I was sure of was that this was the end of whatever it, it was I was moving through, and I remember that as I would journal about these dreams, I would wake and, and uh, write about. Um, you say you would wake up and, and, and write about the dreams that mm-hmm. you had. But yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. But more, more importantly, and this is, I guess, um, I can start this with uh, end of the technique. One of the things that I do when I wake up from 
uh, dreams, especially a visceral one, whether it's a lucid dream, whether it's a nightmare, if it's a dream that's really kind of got me in its, in its embrace, is the first thing I do is sit. <laughs> mm-hmm. I either stay laying where I am yep. um, or I sit on, on the side of the, the, the bed and I focus on, I, I call it, um, my family called it giving your spirit time to catch up with your body. Oh, there was like a belief that. in my family that when you dream, your spirit goes elsewhere. So when you wake, try not to jar yourself awake. Mm-hmm. Try to give your spirit time to catch up with your body. And um, so, so really sitting in the emotion um, of where of what it is I've just dreamed and not so much getting caught up in the details. I think that sometimes we tend to um, get caught up in the narrative of the dreams that we've just left. I'm very, very good and comfortable with sitting in the emotions that are elicited from the dreaming space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so sometimes it would just be allowing myself to feel scared or to feel uh, the unease of it, um, to just embrace what it was that needed to come up and express itself. And so that space that I would create, that space in between, would sometimes happen, most of the time, would happen in the middle of the night. Sometimes when I would wake in the morning from dreams, but more often the sweet spots are like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., literally in the middle of the night. And what I began to do was to physically sometimes get up, and I sleep with my husband, (laughs) and, you know, sometimes get up, and to allow him room to physically, you know, change where I was to move to another room. Mm-hmm. And then if I needed to sit in moonlight, mm-hmm. sit in rock slightly, mm-hmm. if I needed to hum, if I needed to cry, if I needed to laugh, wow. to allow that energy to work its way out of my body, to bring it from the dreaming space into expressing it in the real time ah, was yeah, yeah. would allow would allow the the next step to kind of manifest and what what has happened for me and what happens for me and i'm not you know i'm it's been such a very rich gift has been the conversations that i have inside my head <laughs> yeah with with either myself with spirit with the dreaming, whichever your uh, your practice is, however, whatever resonates <laughs> with the, the consciousness that you want to call it, is full-fledged conversations that, um, that I'm able to move through in my head. And so I would sit there the first couple times I, I went through this in early March, knowing that there's just something wrong with me. There's, I, this is it. I have to get my, my last will and testament in place. This is going to happen. And what, and for me, I call spirit, what spirit, you know, would bring forth in my head is stop. Stop assuming that you know what this is about Uh, or what this looks like. uh Trust that we've got you on this journey and just allow yourself to sit in what you're feeling. Mm, And trust and allow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And so. I, I, I'm a hardhead. I'm a Leo. Uh-huh. I get uh-huh. my things in my And for a solid two week cycle or so, it, it's, you know, constantly, there was there was not any letting up. And I was like, okay, I really need to, to focus on integration. The next time spirit shows up, you know, I'm really going to make space and have myself be open to the idea of integrating, no matter how scary it might look, to open up to, to what it is you know, spirit that you might want to speak to me about. And so sure enough, um, the time for my menses came and I'll just, just, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm trying not to weird out too many people. No, no, this is, that's, um, that's, okay. if, if you, thank you for being just, I want to thank you for just like bringing it here into the room because that's what yeah. the facts of life of being, uh, being a woman and, and a part of the human, uh, to be part of that flow. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and, and it's funny. It's exactly that, Catherine. It's um, the reason I mention that is because as I paid attention, remember I, I said that my dreaming really the gasket blew off the first time I moved into my menses as a young woman. For me, a time in which my lucidity increases, my recall increases, the vividness of my dreams increase mm. almost without fail is during what I call my moon time when I'm on my cycle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I've been able to pay attention to that. I've been able to anticipate. You know, I, I'm not surprised anymore. <laughs> when, you know, when when those moments come up, I 
know that I should maybe lend more of an ear to what I dreamed during those times because my my connection with um, with energies, with elements, with natures is a lot more, it's a lot stronger, it's a lot more visceral. And so my moon time comes around and I wake from a dream and it wasn't the dream that that set me off. It was sitting on the edge of the bed and allowing myself to feel and to understand mm. because uh, I sat on the edge of the bed, I felt my whole body shaking. Spirit turns on in my head and says, get up, let your husband sleep was the first thing that I am like, okay, right? <laughs> right? Because I'm like, all right, and then, yep. you know, so. Thanks for that warning. I, yeah, I physically get up. I go into, you know, a, a new room. I go into. You go into another room, was that? Another room, oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, okay. And I sit in the moonlight mm. and I just kind of gently rock. And spirit says, just say it. Say what it is you're afraid to say. Hmm. And what came up, and I didn't know what was going to come up. I was like, just let it happen. Just let whatever is inside of me that I feel boiling up through, you know, the bottom of my belly, through my chest and about to come out my mouth, give it breath, give it life. And what came out of my mouth was mom is dying. Oh, oh, wow. Um, and, and you, did, and you didn't know in waking life you didn't have. She had not been diagnosed. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. She died um, from pancreatic cancer. She had not been diagnosed. Oh, wow. I know that, um, you know, she had been complaining of uh, stomach aches and ailments. Um, but, it, you know, my mother was also in her 60s. And so it was something that she wrote off. She was always following up with her doctor. She was a very so young. Woman. I feel like. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I mean. Yeah. Like, it was. And, and, um, and the thought came out. And I began to to move through morning. You know, I lot the next I don't even know what, what the time passing was, but I allowed myself to to cry mm -hmm. in that moment mm -hmm. as if I had just received the news that she had passed. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, um to, and it's not even really the end of it, but the end of that section of it. Yeah. Spirit turns on in my head again and has a full-fledged conversation with me about why it's important that I allow myself to go into that space mm -hmm. and why it's important that I prepare myself for my mother's passing without any type of, you know, and this is, and she will receive her diagnosis at the end of the month, which she did. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you know, wow. like there is, yeah, there was no type of, um, there was no type of preemptive, you know, and this is, these are the, technical ways that this will show up in your waking time. It was more so about this is why you need to embrace your voice and, and understand that the reason this is happening is not just because it's a part of, it's a part of life. It's a part of the cycle. Mm -hmm. It's because your mother is matriarch mm -hmm. understands that, that as a woman, and along with the rest of her children, that you have all stepped into your rights mm -hmm. as as kings and queens in your own right, as as uh, fully embodied, you know, manifestations of her dream and her work. She will be OK with her work being done mm -hmm. as long as you continue to to be the most authentic version of yourself. Wow. So you, you can honor her by a, by living that authentic calling. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So she, you found out about this just, it uh, uh, sounds like this, this spring. And so she had, after the diagnosis, she was only around for a few months, it sounds like. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh. And you yeah. saw it coming in, in the dream. Um, and so how did the dreams guide you from there? Like what, what was your like journey like at that point after recognizing and seeing the diagnosis? And, and then there was the fairly sudden yeah. journey to her passing. Yeah, so it was it was more so the the integration, and that's why I I talk about the spaces between. Mm -hmm. It was so this was um, you know I had this discussion with spirit. I embraced the idea of that 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 was the uh, the scary place that I didn't want myself to go to mm -hmm. in the dreams. That was the thought that I would not allow myself to have in um in my waking hours that was presenting itself while I was asleep. And what it did was that as we, it, well, for one, it allowed me to change the way that I engaged with her. 
um, in a way that, you know, was more so, mom, tell me more of your stories, mm. give me more of, you know, as much right. of your spirit and your energy and your life that I can, that I can keep with me. But, but even more so, it had me thinking about all of those places that I'm afraid to go oh, yeah. subconsciously and, and uh, in the dreaming and when I'm not awake. And the importance of needing to create space to engage with the ideas, to allow myself to think the thoughts, to allow us all to think the thoughts that might scare us mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that we can engage with them. As long as it's something that, that we continue to shy away from or move away from, or in my, in my case, I already know what the interpretation of this is. This is about me. This is about my own. <laughs> this is about my journey. You know, as long as we, you know, continue to do that. Um, what happens, especially for those of us who are dreaming through this, is that the dreams, dreaming just gets more insistent. Sometimes it gets a little bit darker. It's us not navigating the things in the spaces that we're afraid of. And it's really being able to create space and time to, for, for the integration. Mm -hmm. That's that's really, um, that's been really an, important. Um, Journaling is great. Oh, yeah. It's an absolute great practice. But mm -hmm. one of the ways, and, and I can give another example, yeah, um, that how I journal is that um, I oftentimes uh, start my journaling with either where I am emotionally, maybe if I've just read a book that I can't get out of my mind, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, if um, what the experience is when I first uh, wake up, maybe some of the thoughts or the emotions that came to me when I just came from a, a dream space. I actually, if you, if there's time, if it's, if it's okay, I have an excerpt for something that I re wrote uh, recently that I can read. Oh yeah. That's, uh, that's great. Well, you know, let's do it right after the break. So I'm just, uh, that'll be perfect because I'm just um, looking for a smooth segue. How is this for a smooth segue? <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I thank you so much to Salah Dubell, and I'm, I'm, I'm loving this journey. It's so tender and powerful. Um, Salah's webpage is Divine by Design, and what you're listening to right now is the Dream Journal, and we are at KSQD. Um, dot org k squid 90.7 fm and uh, our phones are now open so tony Rissimano is standing by you're welcome to dial in 831-900-5773 you can also always send an email to on air at ksqd.org that phone number again 831-900-5773 This is the Dream Journal. My name is Catherine Bell. My guest today is Salah Dubell of DivineByDesign.org. And the phones are now open if you'd like to call in. The number is 831-900-5773. We're talking about dreams and lucid living. And uh, Salah is sharing with us some of the ways that dreams have guided her both while she's sleeping and how she works with them when she's awake during the recent passage of her mother. And uh, you were about to uh, read um, read something for us. Salah, you, you sound great. And I'm so glad to have you on the air with this uh, really <laughs> fabulous journey. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to read. And what I tend to do sometimes in my dream journal, I know that sometimes people um, separate their dream journals from their, their formal journals, mm -hmm. but I like to interweave the two mm -hmm. to, to um, if something is a dream, to label it as such. But um, I'm just going to read the, the portion before I started um, uh, writing about the dream that I had recently. So, moon time dreaming, full moon season, yet still difficult to remember every detail. I woke with a feeling at first, as if I had just seen a long lost friend and been greeted as if not a day had passed. I took a few moments to let my spirit come back up into my body mm. and took note of my awful morning breath and my son's tiny foot a mere two inches from my face. <laughs> As I readjusted and he rolled over to cuddle me with a morning hug, I allowed myself to smile and enjoy the pleasant. When I did sit up, I noticed that the morning sun was high 
and as it hit the purple sequenced part on my pajama top, the light refracted onto the bedroom wall in a thousand purplish and pinkish tones. Mm. Every time my chest rose, every breath that I moved, so too did the light dancing on the walls. And I smiled because I'm all heart and pink was my mother's favorite color uh -huh. and purple is mine. Mm. And then the details of my dream came rushing back in an effortless flow and I smiled. And then after that, I have a, a, a detail of the dream. So mm. that's that's how I write. That's how I, I my dream journal is structured, mm -hmm. is to have those moments sometimes of waking and that that integration that happens before the the cataloging of the dream. When I woke that morning, I was having a bit of difficulty remembering all of the pieces and the details, but I allowed myself to sit in that and just that Really, it's the way you feel when, when you, like, Starbucks has perfected the coffee they just handed to you. <laughs> and the smell of it wakes up everything inside of you, and you just grin a little bit, and you're like, okay, let's do this more. <laughs> that was the feeling that I woke with, uh -huh. yet the details of the space, the dream space that I had just disengaged with weren't really solidified for me. But taking those moments to just, instead of... I really have to recall and think about what it was you know where was i just what what color was that room i was in and yeah. and who was did i engage with and and what happened where and and you know what were the pieces and it was really for me the practice of of allowing things to catch up allowing myself to settle back into the space to disengage with the dream space but with that understanding that that it's something that i'll be integrating through the, the time of my day, through the small moments of my day, and just having that space rushed back everything, <laughs> all of the details and all of the, you know, the pieces and the, um, mm -hmm. the moments that I had just dreamed. And there wasn't coffee anywhere. Well, there was a little bit of coffee in that dream. But, <laughs> it was, but you know, it was, it was real, it's really um, those moments that, um, that integration, you know. There's, um, I'm sorry, like, in, what's that, integration? Yes, what I what I wanted what came to mind just now. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What came to mind just now um, within the, the IASD Screams and Ethnicity Working Group, yeah. um, one of the the, the lecturers, um, Eduardo Durant. Yep. Um, he uh, does a lot of work with um, First Nations people mm -hmm. and uh, PTSD, and in listening to his um, lecture, he mentioned this idea, this uh, belief um, that that the dreaming dreams you, that, that the dream space is, is, can actually be engaged as a sentient um, entity, that it's almost like the, that great void, that vast void of knowing and consciousness for a moment becomes corporeal mm. and engages with you in the form of a dream. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! And love that, that, love that. So that yeah. But as he, as he spoke, I told I was like, okay. So um, he is describing what you know how, how I was raised to think of dreaming. You know, it's uh, uh, re being re referring to it as almost the dreaming, right, with a capital T and a capital D, mm. as if it were something sentient. Um, some people call it spirits, and people call it conversing with their their angels. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's that idea that um it takes us making the the decision right to it to engage on a on a conscious level and sometimes things play themselves out for us in our dreams mm -hmm. but a lot of times you know it, it's how we choose to engage with you know what we encounter in our sleeping times during our waking hours and that's that's real lucid living that that's really um you know having the the shift in our focus to to um, be open to engaging with that during our waking hours, which is where the real healing can 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 manifest. You know, it's interesting because at the uh, conference in Tucson, uh, uh, that I went to several of the lucid dreaming talks, and they and mm -hmm. there's this idea that if you become lucid in the dream, that you can choose to address the uh, consciousness behind the dream. <laughs> And and say what do I need to know here, or like it gets some some help or some healing, and mm -hmm. I just had this idea of, of what if we could do that with our waking consciousness too? It's like to address mm -hmm. 
the waking the consciousness behind the waking life yeah. what do yeah I absolutely oh. absolutely that's something uh in fact so um i was speaking to someone at the conference it was just one of those conversations that you not a water cooler there was a lot of coffee though. it was a conversation <laughs> was. around the coffee right <laughs> yeah, and uh, and um the uh, I was speaking about things I had to do and I said, okay, we need to do this and that and then we need to do that. And then the person I was speaking to smiled and he said, oh, you're a really well integrated person. And I was like, well, what do you mean? And he's like, the fact that you're referring to yourself as we. Some, <laughs> there are some researchers that believe that you're actually talking in terms of your, your id, your ego, and your super, that you're, you're oh, uh-huh. understanding that you yourself have several different, you know, versions of you that end Right. And I hadn't really thought about that. I said, you know, I have to be about I more often. And he said, no, that's the, the fact that you're moving through space as, as a we is that that idea that um, that I'm not ever really separated mm. from from <laughs> other and from that vast consciousness and that knowing is mm. absolutely something that I move through. Well, that the, really, you know, know ties in your day. I'm sorry, your whole thing of divine by design, like, how is, like are <laughs> yeah. we ha- having the divine with us and, at every moment and. Yeah. Is, is that something that we can uh, welcome in the the we the we of life? <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 something absolute. It's it takes balance, right? Mm. Um, because you don't want what you. It's it's kind of that space between. I, okay, the moment that you, I, I'm very upset that I don't remember who, where this quote is from, but it's the the moment that you believe that there's nothing more to learn and that there's nothing more that you need to study all attempts to understand something have failed okay. <laughs> you know like we yes, we are yes. constantly on a, on a journey mm, um, to becoming right and so when you move into the space where it's like well I've taken care of everything there is to know uh, about that subject oh. and I'm an expert there right <laughs> now I can move on to the next field again <laughs> like ah, that's a very westernized view oh my goodness. not I, really the only view <laughs> I, I just have to say that one of my um, uh, one of my pet peeves about working about dreaming is that when I hear somebody say oh now I know what my dream means I'm like no <laughs> no 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 don't close the door yeah. there's so much no. more <laughs> like that's just the beginning no and, uh, no yes thank you i love that it's like that that really closes the door on uh on yeah. on more and it is probably very western so i just want to yeah. uh, say that the phones are open in case anyone would like to call and the number is 831-900-5773 5773. you can also send an email to on air at ksqd.org if you'd like to join this conversation um and and yeah so i I just love this this thing about uh um the we and i like i and and (laughs) (laughs) just i was gonna say something else but that's what came out because it's true it's something like this the dream that i shared at the top of the hour um, about the dance teacher flirting with the dance mm-hmm. teacher like there's some way that this is kind of an angel for me that is like waking up this kind of girlish self and I like close the door I was like oh no I'm married now I can't yeah. I can't do yeah. that anymore uh, but then there's like an, uh, could there be an invitation for me to uh, to open the door and bring that energy <laughs> to my marriage why not I mean how lovely <laughs> yeah, Catherine, I struggle too with, I, and it's not really a struggle. It's um, So I was raised Islamically. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is something that to this day, that's its own, you know, two headed dragon <laughs> that oh, I move yeah. through because I do not fit with the Orthodox interpretation of Islam. And yet I, I still identify as being a Muslim. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the way in which I move through Islam, um, is more so aligned with a mysticism mm-hmm. that that just isn't very much you know mainstream. But suffice it to say, I was you know raised around that idea that you know when you get married, you know here's the Ten Commandments and very <laughs> Judeo-Christian yeah. you know I, ideas around you know sexuality and such. And so I have dreamscapes where I'm tangling with um, sexuality and my own you know comfort and how. Um, I feel myself to be desired or desirable, and it's it's interesting because I was I was talking to my brother. I was talking uh-huh. to Andrew, yeah, uh, we are that close when it comes to dreams. Oh, <laughs> so yes, we're just, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. I'm having conversations with him, and he threw something out there. As you were talking about the dream that you had, and it totally blew me away when he said it. Um, 
I was like, look, I just can't engage with this person on the dreamscape because I'm married. And because and I'm, it's not I'm a sorry. person that I, I can't I'm married. Because of why? Oh, because I'm married. Be- because I'm married. Uh, and, yes, um, yes. and it wasn't, and it wasn't, you know, um, it wasn't even a person that I know. It was, it was a movie star. Uh-huh. Um, but even in the dreamscape, I was like, absolutely not. Like, I have a wedding ring. Right. We're not even going to talk about this. Totally. And so my brother kind of smiled and he said, is it possible that that movie star is how your the dreaming is presenting elements that you love in your husband oh and i was like what (laughs) you're giving me ideas too i love that yeah yes yeah it's all it's the minute you know you kind of slam the door when it can't possibly be that it's got to be this other thing i mean it's just being open to all the possibilities right there's a different kind of morality in dreams Mm -hmm. (laughs) oh yeah Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, is there? That's a good question. Well, they have their own. I was gonna say logic, but I don't think that's quite the right word. <laughs> yeah. Their own sense uh, and their own uh, flow. There's yeah. that flow again. Um, yeah. yeah. So this mm-hmm. is so. So we have about uh, 10, 12 minutes left. And mm-hmm. I wonder if, if you want to say some more about your journey with your mom. I mean, some more or about other things like what is oh. what any, any, yeah. it seems like there's just so much many different directions we could go. And I will also add in this is K-Squid 90.7 FM streaming live at KSQD.org. And this is the Dream Journal. My guest is Salah Dubell and her website's divine by design and uh so what is coming up for you now sola what would you like to take where would you like to take the conversation yeah so i was actually going to um i can share another example mm, of where yes. i was having um in my waking time i was having a lot of struggles and uh, it took me uh being open to inviting the a potential pathway forward mm-hmm. uh, to just okay. Let me back up a oh, second. Okay, I, I'll give a story. I let uh, my brother is getting me comfortable with being a storyteller. So, <laughs> so well, okay, so it. this Go story. <laughs> so this story starts with um, me having a difficult summer uh, financially. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. I was kind of in a mix and in a struggle, but one of the other things that happened that was happening for me um, was I was in this space where. I was thinking, hmm, I can rev up my work hours, but every time I had that thought, I could feel like the aches in my back or just how tired my body was. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to wait, I have to work more and you know, lean more into this uh, paradigm. And so I was really hitting a wall. And um, the place where we lived, we lived in Maryland, and the home that we lived in was one um, that uh, had been the home of my husband's parents. The land that we lived on had been land that in one way or another, my husband's family um, had owned that land for up to seven generations, I think. Mm. So in thinking about what could be a next step for us, it never, ever, ever came into my mind the idea that maybe I should move. Oh, wow. Uh. Maybe I should put my house on the market. Never, no. That wasn't even, uh. no. This is, I will live and die in this home. This home has too much history, you know, whatever. Yeah, um, but <laughs> I found myself hitting a wall. Mm-hmm. And what I did was I, I turned to spirit, I turned to prayer, I turned to, to meditation. And within my journaling, within my intentions, set forth the idea that I don't know what the answer looks like. I know that the universe has it. I know that my creator has the answer. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it looks like. Mm-hmm. Can you give me a piece of, of what it might look like so I can understand what the next steps are. Mm. And I remember going to sleep that night, Catherine. Yeah. And the dream I had, we're going to go right to the, because it's hilarious. Uh-huh. Um, and I guess I just wasn't paying attention to the other pieces of advice uh, Spirit had been dropping for me. But in the dream, I'm in the house and there's this knock on the door. Like mm-hmm. A really powerful knock shakes the entire house. Whoa. I go to the door, open it up. No one is... The, Standing there is um, Yanla Van Zandt uh-huh. um, yes. <laughs> from Yanla Fix My Life, uh-huh. and I, I, I love, I loved her show. I was a fan, and in the dream, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad you're here, Yanla. We need you. We really need you to help us, like, figure out what's going on because you know, I, I, I don't know who it is that we need to engage to to make things better in a Yanla 
stands right in my doorway and just as as plain as you please goes child what are you doing in this house uh, and i was like excuse me it's like what are you doing in this house what are you doing in this neighborhood uh, trying to this house is bigger than the space you need mm. you don't need all this space in this house who are you trying to impress mm. and i had a moment where i said no 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 you're not here to fix me uh, <laughs> and the young no. is like I absolutely am here. To yeah, whose dream is this? And anyway? the and she literally takes me by the arm, walks me around, and she says, "You don't. This is a beautiful space. Plenty of room. Tons of sun and land. We have several acres. You don't need all this. You don't need to keep up. It's too much, and it's taken too much for you to keep up with this space and with the cost of living. And who are you impressing? And I." You know, I drop to my knees in the dream. I'm crying. I'm like, Yanla, you have no, this land is important to my husband. It's important. This is, this is this place where we need to, and Yanla grabs me by the shoulders. And she said, what his family and his people think is most important is right there. And she pointed to my son who was playing in the yard. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. And I woke from that. Mm. I woke from that space. I set up. And I felt like I couldn't stop shivering. I hope my whole body was shaking. Mm. And I felt it was almost as if I had swallowed butterflies or birds mm -hmm. and that they had to get out. They had to get out. I felt it rising from, from right above you know, my butt and in my lower gut and up through my body. And what came out of my mouth was a song. A song, huh? A song. Ooh. I started singing. Yeah. Yes. And it wasn't a song. It was lit it wasn't anybody else's song. I um, used to write poetry. I um, when I was very young, when I was a teenager, I was very interested in slam poetry and open mic nights. So I, but I hadn't done it in years. And literally sitting on the edge of the bed, I started singing. And the song and the tone of it was almost one that was escaping to freedom. The, 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 the I, I can just give you one of the, I can't sing. I don't have it. Let me say this too. I have no singing voice. I'm not trying to get for any record labels. I'm just going to do a broad disclaimer. Please, here. please. please. Is <laughs> not, okay. You, you are perfect. Just the way you are. <laughs> completely, you know, completely like for personal healing. But Absolutely. the first line of the song mm -hmm. was, a, you got to go child. You got to run. You got to go child. And you take your son, Ooh. and every oh, verse of it I have was about <laughs> this I have ominous. It was like get uh, yes. your, get your family, get your, you know, grab each one of their hands uh, and head out, go away. Uh, like this is not. You and it, got to go it, now. Yeah, it was. It run. was. It was beautiful. Yes, Ooh. and it and it that is how I. I integrate and live loosely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was after a lot, and I sat in that, I cried for a bit. There were like 12 verses. It wow. just poured out of me. There wasn't anyone else in the room. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, when I, when I went through the singing of it, but then, you know, I found my husband and I said, okay, we're putting the house in the work. <laughs> and it was, you know, it was <laughs> okay. without any hesitation. Oh. And during the process of it, during the process of when oh, yeah. there were times, because it's it's not an easy process. Um, of course, it's not it's not oh, a yeah. you know it's it's its own gauntlet. But there wasn't any other doubt in me that I needed to lean away from. There, there wasn't any what? Sorry, I faded for a second. I'm sorry. It was so. It was um, it was a surety in me that yeah. that was the path that I needed to take. Mm. That I didn't quite understand. I had never put property on the market before mm -hmm. um I, I was new to the entire experience um it was not in any way shape or form like not stressful it was, it was a lot it was intense wow but it was the right move right right it was the right move for me and it was something that had not come into the realm of possible solutions uh -huh. to what i was dealing with during my waking time but what i did was offer up to the dreaming space to spirit that I'm ready to hear what else you can put on the table, uh -huh. right? Like yep, I, you, yep. you must, you must understand that there's more options here 
than what I'm seeing. I can't see everything, or, may, or maybe a part of me can. Can you help me, you know, wrap my mind around that? And, the, and truly enough, had I opened that door, I, I could have opened that door and it could have been my mom and I probably wouldn't have listened. Uh, right. Is it the dream knows exactly who is the <laughs> exactly. one. So, so la, this is really a myth. You've got to go now. I'm going gonna, gonna to be in my head now. Oh, I love this. So, so la du bell. This has just been an amazing conversation. And I know that you're starting at the Institute for Dream Studies in the fall. Mm -hmm. and, and by the time you leave, you'll be running them. I'm sure they, they don't <laughs> even know what they've got coming. And I am so, such a treasure to talk to you again. And, and we'll get you on the show another time um uh, so your web page is divine by design dot org and uh yes. yes and i wonder um is there any other ways you want folks to get in contact with you or anything that you want to about your offerings you want to say about the web page oh, just yeah. have about you know 30 seconds or so to give the little information out about what you're going we're going to do when you're oh, yeah, absolutely yeah. so we are having our um, next streaming workshop series on the importance of intuition and integration in the dreaming space um, mm. in September. You can go to our website to register for that. That'll be September 15th, 22nd, and 29th. That'll be our our uh, workshop series that we're having. Um, dreams and intuition? Yes. Okay. And then uh, we're also going to be launching our first podcast um, coming up in the fall. Fall is going to have a lot of wonderful transitions around it. Um, and so I, I invite uh, people to stay tuned for that. And then... Um, yeah, to also we have a Thursday, the third Thursday of every month, we have sacred uh, circles, which are, are dreaming circles that you can also learn more about when you go to our website. Wonderful. This is a f so fabulous. So do you have any last thoughts you'd like to share with our listeners, Salah? Just uh, to not be afraid to pay attention to the spaces in between. And sometimes those spaces can be silence. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And and when... Uh, it's said to take the space that you need for self-care. Sometimes it can just be bits and pieces. Don't be afraid if you need to move to a space by yourself and laugh your laughs and cry your cries without letting your, your head get too much into the whys behind it. Sometimes the gift of being human is just allowing yourself to express what needs to be expressed in the universe. Give it sound, give it life, get it out, and then grow from that. Mm. Oh, that's so perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. So lot to Bell and I let's definitely be in touch. I know that uh, uh we I know that we will. <laughs> Absolutely, Catherine. Thank you so much for this. Okay. It's been beautiful All as right. always. Have a have a fabulous day. Thank you, you too. All right. Bye. Bye now. So uh, next week, we will we'll talk to the dreams doctor himself, Jonathan Highland. You can tune in to that. Listen to the live broadcast Saturday at 10 a.m. Or catch the podcast replay, which will be released, as always, on the Monday following the show. Stay tuned for What a Week with Eric Nelson and Tony Russimano. All the news you never knew you needed to know until now. And they will be uh, along in just a few minutes. I am Catherine Bell. This has been the Dream Journal. Thanks for listening. You can find out about my own dream coaching practice at experientialdreamwork.com. You can email me at katherine at ksqd.org. That's K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E -E at ksqd.org. Please contact me so we can talk about dreams and so I can put you on my email list. Um, I am starting a new uh, workshop series on Monday, and so that's the Monday afternoon is a live interactive Zoom series. So give me an email if you would like to join that. Uh, thank you to folks who've been leaving reviews on Apple Podcasts. I'd love to get a few more out there. And uh, thank you to Rick Cleffel for this new music today. You can find out all the same music at pandemiad.com. Rick is also an engineer for the show, so thank you for that. Uh, I'd like to thank Tony Rissimano for answering the phones, Evan Malady for audio editing. The intro music is Water Over Stones, and the outro music is called Everything, both by Mood Science. Thank you to the fabulous donors who support this station. Case Good is entirely listener-supported, and we are always welcome donations at ksqd.org. And when you do donate, be sure to tell them you are a Dream Journal listener. So join me again next Saturday at 10 a.m., uh, and when you wake up in the morning, write down your dream and bring it to the next dream journal. I am Catherine Bell, and you are listening to KSQD Santa Cruz. There's a time in our life Yeah.
that so much is wrong But much more